In this next story, we report on a new hope for a lasting control of the southern grain district's most significant in-crop pest, the Mediterranean snail. Successful lab trials have identified a native nematode that can deliver a death blow to the snail and save growers time and money spent trying to control the problem. We've always had snails and snails have been in this district, Waruka district, for over 85 years. York Peninsula's Waruka district is locally known as the snail capital of the world. And much of this local grain grower's working life has been consumed with finding a way to get rid of the pest. Believe me, people do experience snail conditions like that. Exactly where they came from is a bit of a mystery, but there are four species of Mediterranean snail in the southern cropping districts. They're very small. A conical snail is the size of a grain of barley and the round snail is dwarfed by a $2 coin. But their numbers are huge. The damage they do to the growing crop is bad enough, but it doesn't end there. Later on, closer to harvest in the summer, the little mongrels climb the stalk of the plant to get away from the hot ground. What happens then? Well, let's just say that headers weren't designed to harvest mollusks. The snail juice and shell and dust, it dries like concrete. If you don't do it immediately, if you leave it until the next day, well, it's like trying to remove concrete. In 2010, Graham Hayes spent $20,000 on bait just to keep snail numbers down, and crop rotations have been restricted. Everything we do revolves around how we're going to be able to do all the snails. So if we could eliminate them totally, life would be a whole lot easier. This nematode may be what Graham's hoping for. In a three-year project funded by grower levies and government dollars through the Grains Research and Development Corporation, researchers at Charles Sturt University have found a nematode that's lethal to the snails. What they actually do is they swim up to a snail and they'll enter through the mouth or anus, they burrow through the wall of the gut, mm -hmm. and then release bacteria, which basically give uh, the, the insect or the snail blood poisoning. In the lab, they've done that with remarkable efficiency. But the real test is in the paddock. So field trials are the next step, using snails collected from Graham Hayes's place. So we've collected fields, snails from here, representing both the round and the conical types. We've counted those and we've put, we're putting 40 into each cage, so 20 round and 20 conical. Then we're applying the nematodes at different rates. So we're applying four different rates of the nematodes in conjunction with their bacteria. The bacterial soup is grown in trays of agar and the nematodes seeded into the jelly-like medium. The nematodes then grow and feed on the bacteria and we get a, a very thick soup of bacteria and nematodes that we can use to apply in the field. Over the years, the attempts to eradicate the Mediterranean snail have been many and varied. Systems like cabling, like pusher bars, uh, better baiting timing, uh, and a range of spray treatments, some of which, uh, many of which weren't all that successful. Unfortunately, the move to better farming practices made the snail problem worse. No-till cropping preserves moisture and soil health, but the retained stubble gave snails a convenient habitat. We're taking out uh, cultivation and burning out of the system, which means we really have to be spot on with our other uh, treatments in order to maintain the level of control that that we think we've achieved with those changes um, that we learnt about a decade ago. And in 2000, the problem peaked for Graham Hayes. And um, we did an estimation that uh, snails cost me $143,000, $143,500. We cropped 1,000 hectares, so that gives you an idea. It's, we had a cost, and that was not just that was snail bait, but it was rejected grain, downgraded grain, like the price we you know, finally received for our grain. There have been other biological controls tried. A parasitic fly imported from Spain looked promising, but it didn't know its way round the Mediterranean snail the way the nematode does. The nematode, if it's successful, and it has been in the laboratory, uh, will attack all snails, not just the adult snails, the juveniles. And I mean to say, we can see it could break the whole, the whole life cycle uh, and finally eliminate snails totally. Research like this is rarely without setbacks and this is no exception. Results from this initial field trial have not reproduced the laboratory results where kill rates of 99% were achieved, but more field work is to follow.
Given a successful trial, the next stage would be to work with a commercial partner to develop a product that can be mass produced for farmers to apply in the paddock. For now, Gavin Ash and his team will continue to trial the nematode-rich snail bait. We will come back to look at how they've survived and compare them to the uh, uh, chemicals that are available to do the same job. It'll be a nervous wait for all involved. But certainly the impact of, of uh, the investment in this, if it's successful, will be significant, there is no doubt. This is a game changer for York Peninsula farmers and Lower North farmers and other farmers around the country that are dealing with snail problems, if it's successful. And perhaps the next time Mediterranean snails make headlines will be because the pest has finally been beaten. <laughs>